Hello everybody and welcome back to the Coffee Club podcast episode 86. Starting off with a little bean thank you. This is from Michael, Caitlin and Ian. We met them at the LA meet a couple weeks ago and they gave us two bags. One from, is, it, is the coffee roaster called Dune and then Dart? And they gave us the whole backstory. It was pretty good. I guess they're, is it Santa, mm-hmm. Santa Barbara? They're like two rival roasters and one of them was roommates with the the roasters so like a lot of inside story so we're very excited to try them and uh, give our review on them so thank you very much for those beans and a nice little love message to ollie <laughs> on the back of one of them um always good for the ego no always helps the ego <laughs> so now we appreciate the beans a lot it was lovely to meet you guys so thank you very much they i think they all worked at a running shoe store and that's kind of how i was about to say do they go to ucsb or something i think i, th- I think they're post college have you guys been to santa barbara I've heard it's amazing. It's not even like real life. <laughs> Is it like it's, <laughs> it's like yeah. just the nicest place it's ever. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> you never leave if you, could, if you could stay there, right? What, why don't we have a track meet there? Dude, I think Hoka is headquartered there. Then really? It's not a problem. It's a pretty random fact. That is a random fact. That's a fun fact. That's a fun fact. It's a fun random fact. Could have just made that up too. <laughs> <laughs> if only we were headquartered there. I've heard like, yeah, that'd be so sweet. Just like if Coffee Club becomes... A bigger a business, you could say. I think we should move to the beach. Move yeah. to somewhere a we're little more yeah, relaxed. We're, we're definitely beach. We'd be beaches. We wouldn't be uh, inland. I'd Not say. that this is a bad spot to be based. I'm thinking of all like the massive companies that are based here and like love it. Massive tech company, yeah. which is what we'll be. We should be a massive tech company. <laughs> we're an online media conglomerate. One Lay, day. Laying off ten thousand workers at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to obviously figure out what Gus wants to do though, because he's running the shots. See, so. always got to go through him. So, but yeah, thank you very much for the beans. We appreciate it a lot. Very excited to try those. And then uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone for the great reception to last week's episode. We've had a lot of people messaging, saying just how much they enjoyed it. And I think you could all tell how much we enjoyed it as well. So thanks yes. to Craig again for coming on. It was, uh, it was always idea to like, because he was here in town for only I think two or three days. Yeah. So yeah, he he was leaving the next day and um yeah it just came to me it's like why did we not think of that earlier it was kind of like a rush one because because we just came back from la and whenever we come back from a trip it's always like a couple days to get back into things so it was kind of rushed and ollie had a nice little brain blast and we're like fuck it let's do it and (laughs) when you teach me about it i said craig who (laughs) who are these guys talking about it's craig Craig, oh, you mean Craig, the big Craig Angles in town? You mean, <laughs> yeah. You mean the big Mazunga? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mean Craig, Buster. Craig Right Angles? Yeah. yeah. Craig yeah. Right Angles or Buster. But nah, yeah, was, it, you should have just said big Mazunga yeah, and then I, pretty, then I would have known. Awesome. So, I so, went back and listened to it again. I skipped the first boring part. I, I <laughs> it was, was just us. <laughs> I was listening to it with Santa and I really enjoyed the interview, but I can't. I it's I find it so hard to listen to the podcast because I'm just every time there's like an audio issue or anything I'm just like oh, this is so bad. It bugs, it bugs you. <laughs> yeah, it really bugs me. Which it's like I mean we're doing the best we can, but say la vie. Yeah, we'll uh, yeah. we'll work up to have perfect audio one day. But yeah. yeah, so that was huge. So thank you very much to Craig and just yeah, very happy that everyone enjoyed that one because that was very special for us. But getting into today, really we sat down, not much to talk about today. So we have some training updates ollie and i with george has obviously been racing you've been seeing what's going on with him but ollie and i have been working hard in the shadows so we'll update that and then we're going to do a little fun four by mile best milers of all time draft style thing which that's tom wang's idea he kept telling me because tom listen you mean one tang one tang yeah sorry i have something to tell you guys we're not the only podcast that he listens to <laughs> and <laughs> that's gonna break my heart yeah and he, he t- was telling me about how some of them do like drafts and I, he, he's like, you guys should do a draft. Like, that'd be really fun and running. Like no one really does that. And I was like, what do you mean by that? Like, I kept asking him and then he finally like kind of explained it to me and I think I understand how it works. So we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, first off, I just want to say this is a cursed post long run episode for Morgan. <laughs> My energy <laughs> is... I feel wrecked. Like I ran 12 miles. I guess this is my, I guess I'll get into my, my training update because yeah, yeah, yeah. this is it. So natural flow. It's yeah. a natural flow. So 12 mile long run this morning and that's the longest that I've run in my comeback. So that was pretty awesome. I've done three or four 10 mile runs building up to it. So essentially I'm on like a normal ish routine right now. And like in terms of linking up with the guys, no working out or anything yet. 
getting into that with a few 10 mile progression runs in the, in the next week or so so i'm getting back into things overall it's just like so nice to be back training with the team rather than every morning waking up and being like oh, what the fuck am i gonna do today <laughs> gonna sit on the bike or what just like what form of self-hatred do i want to do so it's just amazing to be back out there running nice weather being with the team it's so good and yeah today got a little bit quicker on the run because i was like that's kind of our long run vibe i think I, like we, we were going ollie and i were cooking sub six good, minutes yeah it was good progression yeah. i would say but it wasn't too crazy yeah it was I, control it was yeah a few click a mile second half Probably. A few clicker miles, a few I clicker think miles, we were yeah. average. I think I averaged like 6.15 yeah. with a couple of slow miles in the beginning. And there's a big hill on the, on the uh, I think it's on the 12th mile or the 11th mile, I, I guess. They call, they call it the Cranny Hill. Oh, yeah, that After is the... After Cranny, Coffee Club TC. Um, that is the Cranny Hill, I forgot. That's the Cranny Hill. So that one's the one that most of Nile High School is used as torture. Yeah. Um, but we were going up that near the end of the run and... Uh, I yeah, popped. Like, I, popped. I, I actually off. popped. Like I started running eight minute pace and my heart rate was going up still. It went up to like 170. I'm like, man, yeah, I don't even get this this high normally. Yeah, that's my average heart rate. I was about to say, that is high for you. <laughs> yeah. That's like yeah. your threshold's in the, I feel like you were like 160s. I right? was hurting. And then I don't know what any of this means, but according to Garmin, my body battery is at 10 right now. Because this is coupled with... Uh, out of what? 100 is like... Oh, shit. Okay, is like, yeah. So yeah. That's, like, that's <laughs> like 10 How many, 10, that's great. How many days recovery is suggested? 70 hours. 70 <laughs> hours? Yeah. Is that four days? 72 hours. Is that four days or three days? I think it's four days. 24, 48, yeah. 60, yeah. Quick math, three and a bit. But That's a, yeah. we'll so, see you in a few days yeah. then. I think, it's, I think the watch really hates me right now because I only got six hours of sleep. So I think that's one of the big factors that it does in like how your readiness state, your training readiness. So my watch is currently hating me right now but yeah my first progression run is in two days so six gotta, hours yeah, what are you been, doing? were you watching pitch perfect three last night <laughs> still on number two uh a <laughs> little side fun fact watch pitch perfect one for the first time a few days ago absolutely loved it you it's seen changed your life i've yeah. seen the first one always been really annoying i keep talking <laughs> yeah. about it see i've seen the first <laughs> i couldn't, we the couldn't f- believe we hadn't seen it i've seen the first one um the second one i just really disliked so then I just don't like it. The second one's pretty shit. I think the third one's even worse. I mean, I didn't even watch the third one, but um, Morgan, I just, Morgan's had a new awakening with this, with this film. I just didn't expect it to be so funny and just the fact that it's just old enough that they're still saying jokes which you couldn't get away with today. Yeah. And I'm just like, so I'm just like watching well, you, them like You shocked. also have this thing where like, sometimes it'll come up in stints where Morgan's very much in the mindset of like, I wish I could sing. I do. do I always. That, that's like, not. That's not a stint. That's a constant stint. Well, it, it comes up as yeah. in like stints. Like it's always there, constant. But it does come up in stints when Morgan is like, I just. Oh, I wish I was a good singer. Like I wish I could sing. And then Pitch Perfect is one of those movies where you can definitely feel that. Like, put yourself and immerse yourself in that, and it's like I. I could be here singing a cappella. You know. Really set me off, yeah. George. Jordan. He's seen it like sixty times. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was telling these guys, like we had, uh, like. Did you, I don't know if you ever went into your dorms in your high school. You guys were no. bad in... They were borders, right? Yeah, but not many. I don't know. We had, we had a small amount, yeah. It sound, sounds not as cool as your schools anyway. But anyway, <laughs> in our boarding house, we had like... Once you got to fourth and fifth year, like the last two years of high school, you got like your own... You got a common room to hang out in. Like a fourth year common room and a fifth year common room. That like no one else... You couldn't... If you were like first, second or third year, you had to like come stand at the line, the door and like knock if you wanted to like talk to a senior. Damn. It's like... You couldn't like come past the door, but we had a PlayStation in there. I think don't know whose it was, and for some reason, for a while, this must have been like DVD time, right? Must have been. Must have been a DVD. Blu-ray, say, Blu-ray. We are, we are yeah, old. probably like a Blu-ray. We're pretty old. So. The Pitch Perfect Blu-ray got like put in the PlayStation and left there for like months, and it was just on repeat every day. Jesus. And so it would just like come on in the morning, and we'd like go in for like between classes, whatever that. I don't know, in the morning. Did no one turn it off? Did and they then, just leave it on? Yeah, and then, like, we'd come back at lunch and it'd be, like, at a different part. It'd be, like, earlier in the movie because it looped around. And then, like, that night it'd be, like, still going. It would just loop for, like... Okay, my question... I swear this is, like, months. My question for you is, when you walked in and you would hear it, would you start singing? Like, instinctively know the lyrics for every song that they would sing because it just be playing on repeat the entire time you were at school? <laughs> no, none of us would sing to it, but we had a rule that you had to say that Anna Kendrick looked hot if she came on 
that's the rule. Yeah, yeah that's the rule. Now, it's not the movie I'd pick to have on repeat, but it's a, I don't know. It's, I don't it's know a good how one because you can probably just come in at any point and just enjoy it. But yeah, so that kind of changed my life. Really enjoyed it. Why? How did we start talking about that? Because you were lacking sleep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I have the old insomnia kicked in last night. I have this thing where, like, I, I am a sensitive sleeper, and if I if I get woken up like while I'm falling asleep or I've been asleep for say like five minutes, then my body thinks it's had a nap and then I'm like wide awake. And then I was also really hungry. So I was desperately trying to fall asleep for like an hour after I had slept for only five minutes, but I just couldn't. And then I had to come downstairs and eat some pizza. Do you get one of those falling ones? Oh, uh, uh, that doesn't really happen. I, that only happens to me if I'm like, I've been asleep for like less than five minutes. And then it wakes you up or you go straight back to sleep. I fall asleep again pretty quick, but that's it's nice. kind of wild that that's a thing. Yeah. No, I think I, ha- I have that very occasionally. I have like some running thing. I have like some weird thing when I'm like running, but yeah, so no real reason. I was just... I think it's a good sign if you're, you're hungry late at night. That means you're training, dude. Or not eating enough. Yeah. One well, of those both two. those things. If you weren't <laughs> training at all, you probably wouldn't be hungry though. No, I've been very happy so, to have my appetite back because I enjoy eating a lot. So that's my training update. Long term, it's at this point, it's like hopefully I'll be back racing by the end of the summer, kind of similar to last year. Like I really want to, these boys are about to embark on another racing trip very soon to Europe and all that. I'm not going to be on that one. I'm just going to be here training and then they'll go again before Worlds. I have no actually no idea what it'll look like for me because I would like to go on that one with you guys, but I'm probably not going to be running at Worlds. So there's, I don't know if there's other European races at that time. So not, I guess not we'll world see. track, but I'm I'm yeah. all for Morgan making the world road team. That's <laughs> that's my big goal. My big goal is to kind of train through a little bit further than everyone else, like when their seasons end, and race the world road running champs in Riga, Latvia, 5K hopefully. Don't know what the it's like super late September. Yeah, in the September what qualification process? Who knows? Right? I assume I assume it's just going to be like a track five k time type scenario, like Australia. Okay, this is my thing. I really don't think that many Australians will try and do it because of just the timing. Like that's like the Australian track season. Like if you're good, you could be racing forever. Like look at like Stewie. That's probably like the one time when you would want to try chill potentially. So i don't know how many people will even want to do it but i assume you'll just have to have like a 5k time like in the top five or whatever and then be willing to do it but who won uh, nationals in the 5k it was Callum Callum davies he won both double yeah that's huge yeah i bet he would get like first pick probably or some i would say to do with yeah because he's in europe right now i think with yeah yeah, 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 so i would say that he's got a few races lined up he was peace in doha he's in great shape and uh winning the 1500 and the 5k australian champ surely like helps you get into races (laughs) yeah but um, But when you do have a down under season yeah thinking of still going into september well just like that'd be hard to logistically he also has a job i think logistically like trying to be in europe for that long when you've already been there for like, this is going to be so hard for the Australians that are going over now because Worlds is so late. And yeah. they've, they've, they've already been there for a season two. Yeah. So. They've already been there for a few weeks. It's going to be like, I don't even know what that is. So pretty Five much or something, half what I'm year. saying is everyone else is going to be snoozing and I'm going to be peaking at that time. Everyone else is asleep, but Morgan's going to be woke. And I'm going to go for and knock out a 5K uh, Olympic qualifier right there because you can do it on the roads now, yeah. I'm pretty well, sure. What is it? 30 enough. Five. Five. Is it actually? It yeah, it gets Olympics. faster. It, it gets faster. Yeah. <laughs> it could be like, I, I wonder happens. what that, it could be really hilly. It could be. Let's hope well, it's it could not. be more downhill. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's hope it's a net downhill. It's probably, a, it has to be a loop or something. It probably is some rule about it. I bet they have it eligible though, whatever the course is. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to be very quick because I'm sure there'll be some really good athletes that do end up doing it. And those road runners, man, they don't really muck about not much and it's gonna be a really small field as well i imagine so i think it'll be like a great opportunity but so pretty much that's just to say that i have a pretty like after being out for three months i'm giving myself i'm trying to give myself like a good amount of time to get back i'm not trying to rush it mm. which just like wouldn't really work anyway so yeah that's where i'm at so i'll be back working out with the team i mean the team is in such great shape so fit so potentially when they're back from this first europe trip i'll be kind of matching up a bit but i don't know if i'll actually be able to do any workouts with them for quite a while but we'll see but 
yeah, very happy to be back running and uh, just on the normal schedule because it sucks just being on your own and having a cross train. So, yeah, no more biking for Morgan. I'm, I'm retired from that life. But, yeah, Ollie, what's your training, racing update? You know, just hanging out. Just chilling. Um, no, I so I had a busy winter slash indoor season. Um, and Driss and I kind of sat down and talked about it. It's like, I, like, I'm a bit different situation to my own yard where I've been pro for a couple of years and I've established myself well enough to, like, not have to race uh, if I don't want to for certain races. Um, and, like, to be pretty blunt, like, there's nothing in the US that's worth um, racing. <laughs> if I'm, like, focusing on Diamond Leagues and stuff and I've been confirmed for, for Diamond Leagues, then... For me, like, I don't need to um, do anything other than just, like, prepare for those big races. So, um, which sucks because, obviously, like, there's a lot of people, like, fans and stuff that would come up uh, to Penn and to L.A. where they're like, oh, when are you racing? And it kind of sucks to tell them, like, oh, I'm racing for a bat. It's like, yeah, I'll see you there. It's like, no. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, next year, like, after my time watching, like, Geordie and, and all the other team race in those races, I'd probably do another one. But I think the toll of just my travel and my other commitments, um, brand commitments or whatever, like it definitely didn't want it to overwhelm me too much and then go and race. So I just trying to focus on training and, um, obviously, you know, do those brand commitments to the best of my ability, which is what I've been doing and training's been going really great. Um, did a cheeky little Michigan with Joe down uh, in LA, which was fun. And then, yeah, just been able to like keep things consistent I'm, unlike Morgan, I've actually averaged nine and a half hours of sleep the past six months. So my sleeping's been really good. Um, the last six months? Yeah. Where'd that come from? Like the sleep or just the stat? The six months? Uh, it's on my phone. So like I can, every time like my phone, because you have that sleep thing. Oh, like the Apple yeah. sleep thing? Yeah. So like give or take 15 minutes, like it's about nine hours average for... That's very impressive. And 15 minutes for six, like six months. So that's been really, really good for me. How does Apple know that? Um, because like you can schedule your They're phone. always listening. Yeah, I can always hear you. But you can schedule your phone to like say like when like you're going to bed. So like for me, I schedule my phone from nine fifteen is downtime, forty five minutes. Ten o'clock is when I go to bed. So like I'll be in bed without my phone at ten o'clock. Um, if I'm not, the phone then knows and like it would change depending on that. So like for example, like there'd be a night where I only get eight and a half hours of sleep. But it could tell, even though if my phone has that setting, because I'm using it. So. So it's not the most accurate. That measure. doesn't sound <laughs> super accurate. Well, I but mean, it's I mean, an, so it it's an like If you're not on your phone, it thinks you're asleep. But I am. But I am. Like I go to bed. <laughs> like I'll be in bed at ten o'clock. Because if I wasn't in bed, I'd probably be on my phone. Always a talented sleeper. He puts the, <laughs> yeah. he puts the phone down and he's straight switch. In bed. No, I believe that though. You do go to sleep very quickly. It's like not. Uh, you're very good at that. So. Yeah. But yeah. that's my uh, that's my update. Well, you you so. came off uh, the busiest winter between going to the racing you did here and then down under the travel and all that. So yeah, it's been very nice to see you able to string together some consistent time here in Boulder. Well, we yeah we had the travel, but consistent training time leading into so your race is going to be Rabat in the first one and then Oslo. So me, Mara, and Yara running Rabat, and then we're going to Saint Moritz to hang out with the team, train there, enjoy St. Moritz and all it has to offer. And then we head to Oslo for the for a nice dance with the Norwegian. And then... World record attempt. World record attempt, apparently. <laughs> and then from there, we'll head back to um, America and then just, like, train here for a bit and get ready for that build-up to uh, World Champs. So, yeah, I mean, I'm in pretty good schedule at the moment. So Although everyone's schedule is now, like, starting to... I think today was the first day everyone's schedule was a bit off, but... Yeah, the schedules have been changing a lot for us on the team, and now everyone's on... Kind of their own schedule. Well, yeah, now that everyone's about to... Because the first batch of people ship off to Europe about, I think, exactly one week from today, but yeah. then depending on everyone else's race schedules, because, yeah, it's it's Diamond League time, and but Diamond Leagues are very hard to get into, and they all have different events, so everyone's kind of doing different ones, and there's a really good meet in LA as well in a couple of weeks. So everyone's kind of... This is the part where, like, for a period of time, everyone's, like on their own schedule everywhere and it's hard to Uh, keep track of everything that's going on but yeah everyone will be uh, based in Europe for three to four weeks which is pretty sick except for Morgan left at home and I don't think Carmelo either 
and Gus. So we'll be holding down the fort here. But yeah, it's an exciting time. They so. really need a proper qualification system for Diamond Leagues. Yeah, it's pretty... When you like annoying. are behind the scenes of people actually trying to figure out these races, it's such a shit show. It's weird that you don't find it's it insane. out until it's like publicly official as well. You just hear all this stuff from your agents and you don't know like i'm sure they're trying to they're you know they're trying to get you in but there's also just all this stuff going on you don't know what the meat directors are saying and all that and i mean the races i think like this batch of races right now are kind of like the prime racing for everyone because like the ones that are closer to wilds i think people will get a little some people don't want to race them whereas for example the big one which we've been talking about is the florence uh, start list came out and like the 5k for example it's probably going to be the best 5k or the most stacked 5k of the year apart from the world final like it's just an amazing list of it's pretty ridiculous it's but it's crazy and the reason we've been talking about it so much is that i mean woody was pretty public on instagram saying that he was trying to get in that field and he's u.s champ 1251 i don't know what other stats he needs but that guy can't get into yeah. this race. Yeah, and when we, the field did come out and it is insane. But even so, like, what else does he? What else is he supposed to do? I guess how, how many Americans are in that field? One, just, just one. Grant. Yeah, I guess he needs to be. He needs to be in the world 5K final and come Fifth. top eight or something. Yeah, yeah. like that's I think what it takes. a lot of it is from the like because obviously Luis hasn't run 12:51, but he came fourth in the world. Yeah. Like, He's around 13.02, so Luis is in there. You would hope that gets you into any race. Coming fourth in the world? Yeah. It's worked pretty well for Mario so far. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> it's yeah, a shit, yeah. for sure. It's the... But they should have... That should be, like, part of the... They should have that written <laughs> down, like, all right, if you are top eight in the world, these are the races you can actually just do. Instead of... It's kind of like an unwritten rule. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, it just seems like if you get top five in the world... It seems like that's a good way to get in. It'd be really cool if it was able to be fully transparent and, you know, they've been trying to push like these world rankings for so long and make them more useful. If, say, there was some form of a system where, you know, there's going to be, how many are in a 1500 for like 12 or 15? And it goes based off the world rankings. I think it's still cool that they let, I don't know, two or three people from the host country in. Like, I think that's like pretty important for for them especially with like all the money they put into it but then you could see like the athletes it like it goes off rankings see the rankings aren't perfect so this would have so many issues as well but something like that where the athletes have to what's the word they have to like say they want to do it and then like if they say they don't then it just goes down and like Mm -hmm. that's because that's not political at all do you want to hear my take on it yeah so my take would be that i mean majority of athletes in the sport have an agent right so, like, before the season starts, you should have a meeting with your agent. The Diamond League requires it. And you say, these are the races I want to do. And then it goes through, like, a list of each meet, depending on requirements. So, like, for example, with the Florence meet, because of the, the reputation of how fast the 5K is, that 5K is going to have, like, higher standards to get into. Whereas, like, the Oslo meet or maybe another meet, like Stockholm 3K, it doesn't have as high standards as the Florence one because everyone wants to go to Florence, right? So mm. if Diamond League were able to set out a schedule where you have all these meets and all these requirements and then you can look at them and say, okay, I think I'll be able to get into these two meets. We can apply for those and then you all put like, but in general, all those meets just still like on the list. So you can get the call up if you need or want to, but you apply on it with your previous year's results and then they have like a structure of like how those results fare. So for example, like the issue with, a lot of people with the diamond leagues is like okay you look at the field and like i've run so i've run 13 flat in the 5k but there's a guy in there that runs 1305 why am i not there because i'm five seconds faster it's like well maybe he was ranked higher than you maybe he finished higher at a world championship or maybe yeah like you said he's from the host country but that stuff definitely needs to be more transparent like on how they select people but mm-hmm. if you were able to like sit down with the agent before the season started and said these are the ones well that's that essentially how it happens now yeah, but it's, it's, just still, not it's still not transparent. Like, it's if not it, transparent. If it is, like, and then they send out, like the Diamond League sends out to the agents, like <clears> the <throat> schedule and like the the requirements, but also like you can apply for all of them, but these are the ones that, that like this is who we're taking. Like for example, like Oslo, Dream Mile usually is like the top 
miles in the world because of the time it is in the season as well as like the prestige of the race all that sort of stuff but the, the, the lack of transparency just hurts a lot of athletes because there are athletes that like you can have a breakout year and you're still struggling to get well, into it. Yeah, it, it hurts athletes that are, say, like, say like the 20th best athlete in the world. It's yeah. really hard even for them. But they could be them. the 10th best if they got into a Diamond League and had that result, you know, like yeah. played out. But because it's tough. If, if you're like, so you, are you, I think you're still ranked fourth. So I don't know if that's correct. Uh, fifth on the world athletics thing. If, if you're there, you're like, I'm getting into every single race. Like, yeah. that's not a question. Well, it, yeah. But someone like Joe Klecker is who... He's ranked top 10 in the world. We know in what's his five k ranking? Five k, I think, is like top fifteen, but he's like eighth in the ten k. I think. Yeah, yeah. that's like, the thing. There's no ten k's in the Diamond League, so if there's more ten k's, he'd probably confirm for. Isn't Brussels, Brussels having a ten k? Not sure about that. I don't know, but for him, it's really hard because he's, he's yeah, he's like on the edge where he would you would think he would get into every single race, but it's still like not that simple because he's right on the edge. But then you have. Yeah, you just have that situation where, like, for example, with Florence, like, you have... Okay, so Alicia and Woody, right? 10K record holders. But Alicia's already in... Um, I think it's... Is it Paris is the big one? Yeah. Yeah, she's already in Paris, right? And that's probably one of the be- better 5K fields for women, right? I'm guessing. That's why she's going. But then Woody can't get into Florence. He's the same situation, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, Wait, did you it say he's the tough. 10K record holder? Uh, Woody 5k indoor record holder sorry yeah thank you record holder Grant yeah 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 but, but then but that's a, not a great comparison but the Alicia... comparison is like they're both American record holders I should say that and it's a 5k whereas like Woody's and Alicia I feel like those two but Alicia came expect. second in a 3k in a diamond league well that's another thing like if Joe or if anybody gets into those diamond leagues like it is quite crucial to perform well because if you do do really well then that definitely gives them incentive to bring you back yeah so it is it is it's just yeah the system definitely could could use some adjustment (laughs) it's just the politics and the lack of transparency which is just annoying but i mean you then you see the star list and you're like it it does most of the time make sense but if yeah if you're on the cusp that's when it's like really annoying because that's when you can get screwed and it's and the worst thing from a pro athlete's perspective is trying to plan a trip to europe like two weeks before the race you want to do and not knowing if you're in that race or not and trying to plan your training as well. And that's a situation that some of us find us in, ourselves in. And that's yeah. when, it, when it is like really annoying because then it actually has like a real impact on what you're going to do. So, but yeah, you're confirmed obviously for all these big races. And I think, yeah, it's the time to get in some very nice hits at a uh, quick 1500s and then you come back and get ready for Worlds. It's a pretty nice schedule. I, yeah, I'm very fortunate. I'm not going to lie. Like, I know. Yeah, I know I'm very lucky, so. Well, you deserve it. I mean, you've earned it by all your previous performances. Yeah. It's like, yeah, what you get for being at the top. One nice thing about it is that Myron and Yarrett are also confirmed. <laughs> so it's, like, nice to have teammates there, you know? Are they, always nice. are they both, are you guys are all on this exact same schedule? <sighs> we, uh, we're definitely for this Europe trip. Like, we definitely, like, Ramat okay. in Oslo, definitely. But then moving forward, I they, don't know. They have to actually qualify. Okay, they have to go race nationals. <laughs> yeah. That's actually the that big sucks. <laughs> But I mean, I, can't I, forget I about think that. they'll be fine. Yeah. But yeah, they still have to like, because Spain is so dominant now in middle distance and obviously the US is is too. So like you have Yara and Mario will go and, go and rip it. Represent. Yeah. So yeah, that's where Ollie and I are at. Just... Yeah, exciting things coming, especially for Ollie and hopefully me for later in the year. So that's a little update on us. And then the next thing we're going to do today is the draft. And we don't have that much structure to it or rules. We're going to do it snake style. How do you guys want to decide the order, though? I think we should do it off... Um, we need, like, a dice. Should we go for our mile PBs? <laughs> well, that's not... Because that's no random chance. That's not random. Why don't we just do... Um, um, I don't even know if you want to... I guess you want to go first. Or do you want to? Because then you get two... Third, third, third's not bad too. If we do sneak draft, like in Catan, third going last is good. I guess either... Because then you, you get two in a row. I guess that's the, po- that's the point of the snake draft is it kind of balances itself out. Or does the person in the middle always get screwed? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Because then you never get two picks in a row. 
Yeah, so, so true. maybe you don't need it. Yeah, but then you get the earlier pick than the other person. Why don't we go teen age seniority, age before beauty? So a the oldest goes first. Yeah. So Who's the oldest? That'll be myself. Okay. And then George. And I, then you. Why did I do that? Thank I you. Just you middle, put yourself in the I just spot. hit the middle. I was very kind of you, George. I didn't um, think about that's it. That's why until I was confused because I, when you said that, I was like, "Is George older than Morgan?" And then yeah. now I just confirmed that George George just screwed himself. So yeah. And I then guess I'll go last. How other? Our only other rule that we have, which we need to discuss this, is we were thinking about maybe having like only one drug cheat allowed per team. Yeah. But. <laughs> It's like very contentious because there are a lot of people on this list who officially are not drug cheats, but potentially or probably drug cheats. And then, I mean, should you be allowed? I mean, I, I'm just going to be honest. I put a few dopers on my list. <laughs> well, all, all I'm going to say is like, if you look at the, the ranked milers in the world, how many in the top 10 do you think were clean? Oh, I haven't looked a, at that list recently. That's such a... That's such a it's, it's, yeah, like very, it's, it's very subjective. Are you in the top 10? Oh, no, you're 12th, oh, aren't you? 13th, yeah. Quite okay. a few of them. It's just the error. But, but this is the know? thing, it's like it's subjective, right? Because I'm sure there's going to be people that say, like, they believe, like, those top 10, maybe they only believe, like, maybe one or two. And there's going to be people that are like, oh, they're all doping. But it's all, you know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's too complicated. I feel like to, no one's off limits. Okay, no I mean, one's off limits. You want. <laughs> okay, that's, that's kind of safe. <laughs> that and then makes we can it just, easier. We can just kind of discuss just go through it, go through if we roles, think yeah. they were... How are we going to decide who wins, though? So the that's up do. to the fans. I, or we, the fans, we could probably just like input it into chat BT chat <laughs> and ask who would win this race. <laughs> we'll see if it has uh, but that, this would they, capability. But chat uh, GPT only go off like PRs, not like racing sense and like the history of the... Because like, like a lot of the athletes when may I have a slower it, PB, but they actually like their like, ability uh, to race and win. Is it's like, true. Like, I've already... I've, I'll tell the fans, I've already asked chat GPT for a team and I'm pretty sure it wasn't, it wasn't just top four. That's PRs. so interesting. So it actually it thought about it a little bit. Well, we can go based off the fans like in the comments... And then we can also... We could reveal what yeah. they, I think. We can give it a look. What team will win? This would be pretty exciting. So What's, what's on the line? What All these we questions. We really didn't prepare <laughs> yeah, I know. for this. What's on the line? Um, okay. My, about... head, my head immediately went to a haircut just because that's what you always do. But I don't want to cut my hair. No, no, no. What about something simple? Um, one day, the next week, you have to buy like coffees and pastries as a loser. So, so are we punishing the loser? We're punishing the loser. We, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not granting anything to the winner. Okay. But the loser... So you don't get any... Well, you get free pastries. Yeah. But then coming second is just as good as coming first. Or we could do That's top two where... Yeah. Uh, top one, sorry, where the winner does win uh, free coffee and free pastry from... Bottom two has bottom to pay. Two. Yeah. Loser has to pay a little more. <laughs> so right. loser, what's more expensive, a pastry or coffee? That's what I was coffee, about to right? say. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. It's going to be something and like that. And also... Obviously, pride is on the yeah. line. A lot of pride. All right. I'll, I'll get us started then. So, <laughs> wow, I'm so scared that all my picks... I have like six names written down. And I'm, I'm pretty sure to, you guys are Are we allowed to use the internet? I'm using my phone. Well, I, I, have, I have it written on my notes app. So, just to preface, I essentially... Like, I thought about the, the fact that they're going to be racing a 4 by mile So, I went for a, like mostly people who I'm confident can run solo really fast times. Is it a time trial? Oh no, I guess we're racing each well, other. Well, that's what my I'm going to instruct my team <laughs> to just press it from the front the whole time. What, what's the team's name? Uh, my team's name is Morgan's Milers. Morgan's Milers. <laughs> Pretty typical. <laughs> so, I think my first pick is the most obvious pick. It's El Garouche. <laughs> so why we let why did I let Morgan go first? Yeah, I mean, I, I all right. I was going to pick someone else. I but if you give me the first pick, I have to pick. The world record holder it's just you can't even though i mean not me saying this not me saying this other people saying this probably did a ton of drugs he was really good at running just quick and from the front the way that he was able to race was so impressive the amount of times that he broke 330 in his career for the 1500 it's pretty crazy it's just he would do it like five times a year just he just go bang it out and he, he would have like good pacemaking stuff but he was also someone who was more on the strength side he, you know, he won his medal in the 5K as well. I watched a video recently. It's like in 99, like a mile in Italy or somewhere. And they were trying to, maybe they were trying to run the world record. This world record is from Rieti. 
Yeah, but it, I mean, he didn't run the world record. It was like some different race, mm. but they, they were like trying to pace it at one fifty, and they come through on like one fifty one, and then like two fifty, and the commentators are like talking about how it's getting tactical. Yeah, and then is. he's and then he like comes down the home straight, waving to the crowd, running three forty five. Like, and the commentators like not even They're that not impressed. impressed. No, he he's like, oh yeah, got, like got a little tactical to run three forty five. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't a fan of the sport when he was running, but I have to imagine it was so different to how we view the 1500 mile. He was just expected, I think. It was kind of like how Ollie was for a bit doing all those US races where you're just like, Ollie's going to go out in 152 and (laughs) and then just run like 332. (laughs) Like He's just going to do it. I think it was just the expectation, but he was running... It was so easy. 327, 328, 329 all the time and for the 1500 and so i think i didn't want to pick him but if i have the first pick i have to pick him so i mean it was just stupid not to right? <laughs> okay. like you would I'm, be you'd be considered stupid not right. to. i'm so, gonna george's first um, pick and this is in their prime right it's not right now yeah it's not a 45 year old <laughs> no it's say, definitely, right. in um, definitely his prime. i'm gonna go with big rival look at it's a very good pick it's a very good pick okay Coach, Coach Kip now. Yeah, does he still coach at yeah. Arizona? I think his recruiting is getting quite good, actually. Nice. Yeah. How will you get two picks? My first pick. He's ranked fourth. PRs. Um, in PRs, he's also a commentator. Damn. Do you know who it is? Yeah, I wanted him. Wait, I got him. Cram? Steve Cram. He's ranked fourth. Yeah. He ran. What does he run? He's uh, forty-six. Let me see this list. I need a little, uh... <laughs> so the thing why I picked Steve Cram as well, because he was actually going to be my number one pick if I didn't get El Baruch. Um, I picked Steve Cram because of the way he raced the Dream Mile against Seb Co. He like ran that ridiculous race where he closed the last 800 in like 140 fucking or something like 148, 147. Wait, when he ran 346? Yeah, when he ran that. He has a European record. He closed in 53, apparently. Yeah, he ran something stupid. So, like, he can, he could anchor my team, you know? You put him on anchor. And, like, he was one of those guys that's super competitive. My next pick, um, (laughs) my next pick, you picking yourself? (laughs) Is Ollie Hall. (laughs) Damn, that was going to be my pick. (laughs) We should have put a rule against this. Purely for the fact that (laughs) I've. Purely for the fact that, like, I believe I could do the middle legs justice, I could hold on. Um, oh, the first you, you just want to be on a team with Steve Cram. I also just understandable want to be on with Steve Cram. But I, I, mean, I was really? looking through. I was, there was one person that I was looking at who was American, but he has only run that time like once. Like he wasn't consistent. Was it Alan? 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 Yeah. Mm. So like I was gonna pick him, but then I'm thinking <laughs> like. Him. He did um, run his race pretty much completely solo. He did, no, which he, is like super yeah, impressive. Well, he had two pacemakers. Oh yeah, he did. Oh, I did. Yeah. Something. I mean, he had two. Still, pacemakers. still, he was like a crazy racer and crazy runner. But I feel like I, I just want to put myself in there merely as a flex, but also as <laughs> you deserve to be on. You're ranked thirteenth, no. So I mean we're picking unless we picked literally the top twelve <laughs> yeah. without yeah then you're very much in the conversation yeah especially for a four by mile style race yeah All yeah right. especially for front running I it's a good pick <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm I'm gonna go another just to rival that I'm gonna go with Jingi yeah I was surprised it took so long for him to get picked I actually didn't even think about it <laughs> before yeah that's uh. I would have loved to have Jakob and Oli on the same team, <laughs> but it's probably. I'm just gonna put them against team. each other. Yeah. I'm gonna put them on whatever league. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, that might make Oli run better though. <laughs> you might have made a mistake here. <laughs> that's when Oli. That's when Oli runs his best. That's when he ran. Actually, his time. No, do you get two picks? Right. I believe so. I'm I'm getting really screwed here. So, I'm gonna take a little trip to Kenya and pick Daniel Komen. Yeah. <laughs> just because he mm. also. He's running a 720 for the 3K. He also disappeared after that as well. <laughs> well, he had a lot of good races. He has a ton of medals and all that. And, dude, my team's going to be so dirty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my next pick is Shelby. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think if he can run 720, I mean, I think he's mile time. I think he's in the top 10 list. I, I, the 1500 mile, he has the time in that event. But just also just the fact that he ran a 723k, I'm pretty sure he ran a lot of that solo as well. I'm so confident that he could just go to the front 
and make it make everyone suffer. My team is just full of just just only front runners. And so What did Bekele ever run in the mile? I don't know if he really did ran he that quick. He I bet he, he did. did he but I, I don't think it was that. I, I mean, so did Kipchoge. Kipchoge's also run a mile. They have good 1500 yeah. times. Like, Kipchoge's like 34. Yeah. It? Maybe even quicker because I saw them on the list when I was looking yeah. before. All right. Who's your next pick? My next pick is Stuart McSwain. <laughs> I was going to say, sure, he sure deserves Interesting. to be, be in the, in the I'm mix. telling you, man. My team is just, we're just going to get like a five meter gap and we're just going to hold it the but whole you all, time. The, but the thing with your team too is they can all front run like that's exactly, really well. That's exactly it. Like you guys are going to be battling. We're going to leave you guys in the dust and you guys are going to be getting tactical for second place. So Stewie, uh, obviously a little bit biased, but he is literally one of the best front runners in the world at the 1500 100%, mile. So 100%. Uh, similar. Can we put, can we put super spikes on these old guys? You know, it's, just, right. it's like, we're using, we're it's using like, all um, the technology we can my next pick then is the Boog Mazunga. <laughs> Craig uh, Craig. I, I was thought about putting him down. Dude, yeah. I actually, with him with the super shoes. Woof. Woof. Bust up. I mean, he ran 348 and... Wait, George, what's your okay. team called again? Um, I don't know. I haven't come up with a name yet. Have you named yours? Yeah. What's your name? The Harrowing Horse. Oh, the Harrowing <laughs> Horse. That's really good. Morgan's Smile is the Harrowing Horse. George, you can uh, take the time to come up with one. Yeah. Because these are some intimidating names. So I only got one more pick. I need to look at this list again. You gotta use my face. Craig, Craig was a so good pick, though. You have to pick your last two now. Yeah. So. And then you get. There's the somebody. Last pick. There's somebody that I'm picking here, and they're not really on the list um, for the mile. Outdoor, indoor, however, they got very close to the world record. Yard Nagus. Oh my god! I didn't even think of him. <laughs> I didn't think of him actually. Yard I was Nagus. thinking of. Dude, I was Morgan's, wondering if someone was going to pick him. Morgan's on a fly with like this front running. Anybody can bring down front running, Steve Cram, Yard Nagus. So he's my third pick. Honestly, him and Crammy could could fight for the anchor and they'd both fucking crush it. Um but yeah, Yard is my my third pick. That American. guy can close in twenty five to run a very quick mile time, so Yeah, so great anchor leg. Yeah. Um I just I think for my final pick, um I I shit. Sec. Gotta go back to the. <laughs> Gotta go back to the notes. Back to the notes. See who's um, on there. A lot of pressure to bring this team together. Your team so far is. These teams have like distinct profiles so far. All these team is people that are very close to him, in some way. Very personal picks. Yeah, it's very personal. Very, picks. A very emotional team. Which I fight off emotion. The my last pick. This is my last pick. He was my dad's hero, running like when my like when my dad's idol. He's also a New Zealander. I knew I can't Johnny Walker. He did this. I, can't I was, looking, he I was did making this. sure he was in the top forty at least. <laughs> so that's my team of uh, an Australian, an American, a British guy, and a New Zealand bloke. I I, w- I was gonna feel bad not picking him. I'm glad someone did, but his three forty nine world record was is worth. Remember, way remember, now. he's that's with the super shoes now too. That so was, he's like that's like two three seconds. That you was convert, like sixty years ago. You convert that to now, yeah. <laughs> Dude, someone should probably pick Roger Bannister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. He was doing it on the I don't know, dirt track. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, if it was a four by eight hundred, you know, the best person to pick. Who? Peter Snell. Yeah. That dude, that 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 record yeah, is ridiculous. Imagine him with a nice track and super shoes. I think John Walker is a great pick. When I was looking at the all-time list, I really it was really notable. Just like look, because it has all their birth dates on there. Like how much older he is than like almost everyone else on that list. Mm-hmm. So you convert that to today. It's a good, it's a good definition. I don't know, shit, I don't know who to pick. Do, do they have to anchor? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. But just the team. Just the team. The Beaming Beamishes. The Beaming Beamishes, I like that. There's yeah. some really good runners that are still left on the table. Yeah, I was going to say, that's yeah. a, a, like a huge list of I think I think the second five, fastest mile time... I think second and third. Yeah. Are you From still? some Algerian dude. Uh, that. Oh, more but, we're, 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 yeah, yeah. but the thing is, we've picked, we picked athletes purely off, like, not just their mile time, but, like, <clears throat> how they've raced in their career, too. Like, yeah. which is, like, very, very important, I think. We, mm-hmm. We're not. Mm-hmm. We're picking people that we know race with. Well. We've also all picked athletes who like are more well known to us. Yeah. Because yeah, if you go on that list, there are some names who it's. I don't really know either of those 
chicken and they're not that relevant to us but yeah so what's your final pick George my final pick shit I don't know if I want to do I want someone that can run 343 (laughs) (laughs) it's pretty quick 347 (laughs) it's pretty quick 347 sounds good 347 is still very good until you're three seconds behind the guy in front. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good anymore. I mean, it still sounds pretty good. Who have you got left? Let me see. One more look. I don't want to start boring people because I'm taking too long. But this is this is for the coffees and the pastries. Damn, Daniel Cummins, pretty good, huh? Never heard of this dude. Never heard of this dude. That's insane. Um, I feel like I've just... I just got to go PR, I think. I haven't picked anyone from the top. I haven't got anyone in the top five. But I think Legat has the second fastest 1500 time, I think. So. That's a pretty good stat. That's a good. <coughs> that kind of counts. Let's, uh, you let's, go to 1500 as well. That. I will take. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you're right. You are right. Dude, what the hell? Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. I thought it was Kip saying. Kip Rob. Kip Rob. Yeah, he's on Wait, the table Tim- as well. Timothy, yeah. Timothy Chariot, seventh fastest. Hey, there's a lot of good names on the table. He's good at the front too. Um, Damn. Screw it. I get a probably. <laughs> I get a. Uh, he's, he's probably clean. I'll get. Uh, no, I didn't say his name. No, Wait, no, 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 no I, I want the other guy. I gotta get him back up. Nardine Morselli. I want Morselli. I think he was like a gold medalist. I think he was just a bit before our time. I think. I don't. He was. I think he was the world record holder before. Before I agree, yeah. Yeah. Because I think they both broke in the same race mm. in Guinea, didn't he? Because wasn't he just sitting on El Dude, that's crazy says- though. Steve Cram, 1960. <laughs> he ran 346. That no, that's so date of birth. Ago. Not when he ran. Oh, no, date of birth. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I thought this was the date they ran it. It was like early. That would actually be though. cool if they had that. Wait, they probably do. They, they do. do. Yeah. yeah. 1999, 1999. When did he run it? 1985 though. That's fucking crazy. That's when Steve Cram ran that. Yeah. That's fucking Last pick. Last pick for Morgan's Milers. Watch the teams in. Fourth pick in the draft. Do I just do it? Do I just have the most dominant team of all time? <laughs> I think I'm just going to pick no one yet. <laughs> we did just give you the top two people. <laughs> what were you thinking, bro? <clears throat> but the thing is, I'm going off pure like racing. <laughs> Yeah, is, this, that's why I got Legat. I don't know if he's known for his front running. I feel like no, I have, but, yeah. I have Dude runners can that race. are capable. I have runners that are capable of running that quick, but they also can race. <laughs> Whereas, like, you also have that. But still, <laughs> are we? Aren't we just doing this as a race? This do you guys? Race. Do you guys? So I think now we should go through our I team think we should and say the order. order. We oh, should say order. the order that they're gonna race. Oh shit! Because okay, so I'm gonna have Noah Yeni in the lead off. <laughs> because he has proven that he can't be dropped except for by one person which Who's was always already on your team <laughs> which he didn't actually drop him he beat him by like one step when he run, ran the world record so I'm confident that he'll be able to sit at least on anyone and then and then kick to the front and then the next one I'm going to pick will be Daniel Coleman and I'm going to instruct him to go out in 54 <laughs> and just keep running 54s for as long as possible and then third pick will be Stewie because I think he a third uh, runner sorry will be Stewie because I think he'll be so strong I'm as, I'm hoping at that point we have a lead and I think Stewie will be able to hold it and then just give it to Elgar <laughs> to, to anchor it in which I mean the only times he has been beaten I think in the high level race is when he does have to lead more which I mean that's obviously that's when everyone's the most vulnerable but I'm hoping that at that point he has let's say a five or 10 meter lead and he's got, he just goes out so quick and he just can never, I hope that no one can ever make contact with him. That's, <laughs> who, that's like who the was the Kenyan who beat him in Sydney? I we thought it no was, no one picked him. I thought it was, was it not? No one, Yanny. No. <clears throat> I watched it the other day. I'll look it up. I'm trying to think of his name. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll go next. I'm going to have, uh, the big Mazunga take yeah, the lead. That's a good little. Um, just to say it was no one. It was? Yeah, so we got a bunch of gold medals on my team. Granada like got was there. Are you sure? Yeah, it says there. Yeah, Sydney. For some reason I thought it was someone else. So. Alright, yeah. he's decent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to have. Who else do I pay? Oh, I'll have. Uh, you have Jakob, you look at Craig Marchand. I'll have. Marcelli, um 
take on Daniel Coleman <laughs> on the second leg. And then just a really solid Jengi third leg. And then Legat has got he's got this last one fifty, so he definitely he's gonna be my man last. on the anchor. If anyone's gonna he he might be I mean we have in all his team he has a ton of people who have amazing closes, but still Legat might be the best at closing out a race. So I'll leave it to your order. My order. Steve Cram is leading off. The reason why is that I feel like he can handle um, the amount of power and strength that Beaming Beamish and Morgan's Marlis has. So Steve Cram's going to lead it off. Second, Johnny Walker. Um, I feel like he would be able to like maintain the positioning that we need for me to go third against Shui and Jakob because <laughs> I know how to race those guys. That's the only reason why I could go third. I feel like I could feel familiar with those two amazing athletes. And then... To anchor it off, I mean, come on, Yara the Goose. You're putting the if he's there, there, if he's there, he's going to win the race. So if I can just keep it in contention, and El Garouge. <laughs> Yara versus Legat El versus El Garouge. <laughs> that would be the dream to watch that <laughs> race. And then and this Yara just flying 200 meters to go, realizing that, oh, I might be able to. He sniffs the win, comes through, massive can, celebration. Can you imagine? I, I can't wait until like a year from now. We have AI technology where you can make it, like do a video of this race yeah. and, just, <laughs> and just like play it, pl- just play the race out yeah. for us. It'd just, be so just awesome. Just make a video watch. of it. Well, when we put this into Jet, Jet GPT, we'll just ask for like very detailed uh, summary of what exactly happened. Yeah. How it all played out. Yeah. So that's how I dropped. I don't know. Do you guys think that went well? I think that was super fun too. Yeah. I don't know if the audience has enjoyed listening to it, but <laughs> yeah. um, I really enjoyed kind of picking it out so let us know in Two the comments OAC runners yeah that's, that's pretty impressive I mean it's pretty biased maybe we're biased yeah. <laughs> we're a little biased I, I think I legitimately think both you, like you and yeah like really deserve to be on that list I, yeah. I but then there's a lot of people that we, we did miss out that <laughs> should be like dude Sebastian Co. there's a lot of that people that, were, that are good at racing that yeah like Centro and Willis that I just wouldn't pick for a yeah the style to have a baton leading it but great races yeah i think uh hmm i just put in chat gpt as an ai language model i don't have access to real-time information or the ability to predict the outcome of hypothetical races what but we can, maybe, maybe you have to you have to just word ask, it right yeah word it the right way and we can get it because now they're just wow nerdy had the world record in the mile for almost a decade this is there's gonna be some like old heads who are like listening to this and just mean like these guys know nothing about <laughs> about the sport like these are like the legends but sorry i don't think the only people over the age of 30 that listen to this is our three dads <laughs> <laughs> nah, i think we've got a good that's one of our that's one of our prime demos our main demographic <laughs> but uh yeah please in the comments let us know which team you think would win we'll try to get the uh, ais to tell us their version of it and also maybe put in well i guess you can't put in your team because you didn't do the draft with us and that was a big part of it but yeah that was fun uh hopefully we can do i because the thing with the draft is you can make it kind of any way you want like we can do it in uh very different fun ways in future episodes with different stuff so yeah that was a cool little thing to do thank you Wom tang for the uh, idea but one of the things that i wanted to bring up earlier which we uh missed was just like a little like sh- shit on Eugene type segment. I don't. It, it, okay, let's. I you know what I like. Or is I this love what a good we wanted? Eugene, but maybe we should say shit on U of O you more of than o. Eugene because of the situation that you're about to describe. Yeah, they have so, been very quiet. Just have seen absolutely nothing. Super quiet from them. I don't even have any idea how they did it. Packed. They're not even available for comment. Not available for comment at I all. I couldn't tell you what one U of O person came at Pac twelve which is kind of crazy and there's just been i think one of the things that we said when we heard that jerry was the coach they were like oh we're just gonna be racing in eugene every week yeah yeah it is what everyone thought and look at us now not one race in eugene not one race i'm pretty sure the only meet i think i saw on a let's run article because the reason this became a bit of a hot topic in the last week was because pac 12s i don't know why the host couldn't host it and they're looking for other places to host it it ended up being at mount sac i believe but they asked oregon if they wanted to host it and they declined and the uh the 
journalists got on the story and they were they, they asked jerry he was unavailable for comment and then they asked <laughs> wait <laughs> seriously he actually, he actually was. was unavailable for comment <laughs> and then he's the director of the <laughs> fucking program he's unavailable to comment on why they can't for comment. Host it. and then what they did which is real sneaky is they asked i'm not sure if uh, the journalist that wrote the article or let's run asked but they asked vin lonano Oh, who was the head coach at Oregon for a lot of years, and obviously he knows very well. They asked him, "How hard would it be to, you know, host this so host this conference meet with this amount of notice?" And he just replied, "Not very." <laughs> so he was kind of like, "I mean, there must be so many people at in at Oregon, just like at the university, just that you could tell to like." But w- also, it's run like, by the Pac-12, yeah. so I'm sure that it's not like money's an issue. Yes, it's not like yeah. You, so why do you think he didn't want to host it? Because obviously it's it's not it's not hard to set up. Pac-12 is doing most of the work. Plus financially, they're not. Yeah, I think Oregon still does a lot of the work, but I think I doubt. I'm not sure how it works financially, but you definitely wouldn't be. I'm almost certain you wouldn't be I mean, losing that stadium, money to do like, it. That's the whole point of that stadium, right? It's just to the use home it. Of, the home of track. And yeah. just generally, if you look at it, there's been not that many. So last year there was a ton of home meets. Mm. Even like there was. The year before that, those pro meets, but like last year, there was like all these home meets. Whereas this year, they've taken out most of them. Well, they've had one very important meet, boys, that you've missed the Oregon Relays. Yeah, um, I think that's like the, the only one. The outstanding four by mile attempt. Yeah. yeah. That was a world record attempt, wasn't it? It's everything's a world record attempt. Every, every time four by mile. Every time four by mile is a world record attempt. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Um, but like, it, it did, that annoys me that I'm just going to go on a little Ollie rant. If you're the director of that program, particularly you of O, you have to say something. You can't just say not available for comment. You have to say something. Just make up a, a reason. Like you just don't want to host it. That's fine. That's a reason. Yeah. But no comment is like... It's dude, weird to be you, quiet. You're doing a disservice to the sport that you're supposed to be helping. If you're not going to just say at least something. Because, you know, I, dude, if I was from another school and I'm going to Haywood and I don't get to go to Haywood that, like, that often... It's a pretty surreal experience. Yeah, and I'm just shocked that the just more generally that the Bauman people aren't racing there. Maybe they don't think it's a fast track. I'm not sure, but you would expect them to. Hey, it's it's it, want to see that race. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's been done before yeah. in the cold and rain. You can run it there. And so the only a few of those guys need standards too. Yeah, like you would think maybe that would be an I easy mean, way to do it. Maybe they will do it eventually, and we'll have to eat our words. But for now, the only big meet there they're not even hosting in subways is is going to be prefontaine and they like have to host that they have to host that they don't have an option usa's is there oh usa's but not into double a's yeah so okay so usa's and pre two of the biggest meets probably on the u.s calendar but also that's not even that's not even like their choice that's like you have to host like that's like nike saying you guys we're doing this. Yeah, shut up. You know that. You know that. <laughs> we pay you a lot of money. You got to do that this. That would be funny though if Jerry just like made it really difficult for them to run <laughs> those like, meets. No, no, if no, he was no, like no. just like making no one work, like <laughs> locking locking the gate and just not letting anyone it, in. It is funny that essentially no matter what they do, we're going to criticize it. Yeah. But it is mm-hmm. just weird. Like but that, why are they not hosting meets? I feel like we're warranted. I think it's warranted to criticize that. The Pac-12 thing. I think that's warranted. We make fun of them a lot because, you know, it, yeah. it's easy to make fun of them. But that you got you got to understand is that's a disservice to the sport you have to make up some sort of comment you can't just say nothing and then not like that's pretty sucky particularly as a college he's a college coach now like he's yeah. got to have that responsibility and i don't we we don't follow the NCAA that closely yeah. but we do follow it a bit we don't hear anything from oregon like when no. you said that george you're 100 percent correct which you have to think that the Oregon team must be one of the best rosters out there. Has Jerry ever done a press conference talking about his out? Because you know how like, have Mick to. Byrne does that for Wisconsin, right? He does it after Big Tens. You have to do like, I'm sure some he's sort forced of talk to. to like the media. I'm sure Jerry has to do something like that. Like he can't just hide into that 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 tower. You know that tower, and it's <laughs> yeah. like Jerry's just hiding in there. It's just like no one, not available for comment. I don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. And then he's just got his watch and he's looking out the window, watching the Bowman guys just get their splits. Yeah, he's yeah. Just sixty-one. Hide and <laughs> I couldn't tell you who the best runner on the team was. Yeah, who Oregon or Bowman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Oregon. You think, especially now with college teams, you know, there's so many stars. Yeah, yeah. the NCAA level you would expect and maybe it'll come I'm sure it'll come in the next couple of years still I have I have faith that it's gonna come but there's no stars really that I can think of I have a question I'm sorry I'm backtracking here guys we didn't go through something very very crucial for our full by mile the venue where are we gonna do it yeah sorry I, I know it's backtracking <clears throat> thinking about Oregon thinking about Haywood like we can do a BU <laughs> <laughs> 
We got to We got to establish the value. No, we're going to run 340 flat. I think I would like. I think BU would benefit my team. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to go. To BU. All right, BU it is. Let's settle. Uh, I think, you know. I would be interesting to see where most of those runners ran their PBs. I think a lot did run them in Italy at Rie or, that, or during Oslo. that time. And then Oslo would be a great track for it. I think I think you would probably want to pick between Oslo or Haywood Field. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about was Haywood. Cause like, Just legacy. You know how when we're talking about, well, we're making fun of Eugene. I, you know what I'm like with that. Cheeky, um, but in general, it's funny that we make. Can I just say it? it's funny we make fun of Eugene, and then if someone asks me like, "Yo, what's like the best track you ever raced at?" I'm always like, "Haywood Field." <laughs> <laughs> with Eugene, like with Haywood, two, two things can had, be true at once. <laughs> if, if you think about it, and I'm sure our listeners would agree, if we were able to somehow make this like a concept of reality and put it in Haywood Field, it would fill up the, the, the seating. Like, I don't it know would, if it would still. You don't think it would? <laughs> hey, you have El Garouge. <laughs> you have Shui Mix. You have all these amazing runners. You don't think it would fill up a stand at least halfway. Was was the stadium full for World Champs? No. It's the last few days, yes. You think so? I think, yeah. I can't even remember. But, okay, maybe I think we probably could. This is like if you could, yeah, because you you have to think that you would also simultaneously be achieving like a great feat of science. <laughs> so people would come. So, so people that. would come for the feat of science more than anything. Also, yeah. like, yeah, it's I like mean, a hologram. Let's be the hologram. Imagine, race. imagine distance running fans is like. I just wish I could watch one of these athletes. You get to watch all of them. Yeah, you're you're right. People would fly into Eugene for this. I feel time. like you could fly in for that. I mean, if I saw El Garouf running in a race, I would fly. In for I would that. I would make the effort to yeah. go to it. So and then Gus will shoot the gun. Yeah, that'd be epic. But I think Haywood Field would be yeah. a good place. But also, we're kind of biased. But with that's that. another thing with going. I think back it would be to, in Europe. I'd pick something. You pick Europe. in Europe. Going back to that with with Haywood Field and Pac-12. Pac-12 is probably one of the biggest conferences in, in the NCAA. Power Five. To Power Five, like it'd be pretty cool to see that stand full of college kids for Pac-12. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't even know. Do people even go and watch conference though? I mean, Dude, stadium was absolutely chocker. Yeah. George went to Big Skies, yeah, Big Skies Big you know, Sky. that's different. Big Skies can there's always Power 5 and then there's, yeah. something, then, then above there's, that. there's yeah. something above that, it's and then like there's Big Sky. Power 1. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Big Sky Conference in Greeley. I, I mean, there's Saturday. a line at the door just to get a whiff yeah, yeah. of uh, Mike Smith's ticket was so. Ticket was $100 to get it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and Nico Young's racing. It was money It was money well spent. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. No, but. I, I don't think people will go to watch conference. If you're going to pick a track meet to watch, you're just not. Because conference is just, it's cool. If I was a local kid, I would love to go watch a conference yeah, meet. I, th- that's the thing. I'm just trying to figure out why <laughs> Jerry would turn it down. Is it just because it's effort? We should reach out to him, see what he has to say. Nah, he's probably, it's probably no just. No comment. <laughs> yeah. He, I think he just hates doing everything. He's just brand, He's brought his. Uh, but he's the director of the pro like he has to like you know what I mean like he hates doing everything but he wanted this job like it's a very it's a pretty amazing job you he's know? brought his shadow league style coaching from shadow the, league <laughs> to, to the U of Oregon now we're never going to hear anything about these guys until they race so yeah I'd still just really wonder how that all works over there with all those athletes should we, should we uh, one time do an undercover coffee club podcast and just like walk around Eugene dressed up with moustaches and try and get around just all the do, athletes just do some interviews yeah pretend they don't know who we are it's like my name is Keith McSqueezy <laughs> and I'm here to report on certain things oh I wish I could think of his name right now but the kid one of the kids who I think is like I think he's a sub four miler I think he's like the top one of the top Milo recruits going to Oregon, he bought one of the Ollie shirts. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah, we guys have me on the podcast if I wear it the first day of practice. I was like, fuck you. Yeah. That's like the funniest thing ever. So uh, I wish I could remember his name right now. But So wait, so he wore it at practice? No, he was he's a high going, schooler right oh, now. He's, yeah, I think. I think he, should wear, he should wear it to Jeremy's practice. Bro. <laughs> Every day he rocks out wearing it. That'd be the funniest thing ever. Jeremy would be like, who the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, like your shirt. He'd be clueless, I imagine. He's probably in his own world. But yeah so that's uh it's just funny to reflect on that after because it's just it just goes quiet so quickly you know mm. you just don't hear anything about it so we're gonna we're gonna make some noise we're gonna bring it to attention we're gonna make some noise we're gonna make some noise you here first so to round off this episode i think we wanted to do a couple of quick q a questions first one technically this is objective but we don't actually know the answer who do you guys think 
gets the most and the least sleep on the team. Least, oh, does it include coaches? <laughs> no. Does it include naps? I feel like that's important. Yeah, because do we nap? Do you nap? Not often. I don't often. I don't often nap either. And when I try, I normally fail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I I nap too much and I'm like cooked. I think we should include naps. Even though that's hard because yeah. I know I know for a fact that like for example Joe naps a lot. He naps every day. I think. I think Joe naps. A, Joe's a tough one because he naps a lot, but he also doesn't sleep that much at night. No, he sleeps like he six is hours. like chronic. But you, you, his <laughs> insomnia stories are the funniest things I've ever heard. The, yeah. the, the fly booking thing for California goes down as one of the best stories I've ever heard. Like just to him procrastinating overnight because he couldn't sleep, but he might be able to gain like three or four hours back in napping. Yeah, our first, I our first year on the team, I feel like I don't know before. Maybe he just started. He just started training more. Or like he he would. Send us selfies on Snapchat like every night. Yeah, 4 a.m. with a muffin. Remember? He'd be like, yeah. he'd be downstairs in his kitchen. I think he still does that. In the middle yeah. of the night. I, still I bet he probably photos. still does. Yeah. So Definitely. Mm. Joe's you, not you, the you think, you think Joe could be the least? Let's just do night sleep because then that's easier. I would say least is probably Joe or maybe myself because I go through bouts of insomnia, but I'm not sure if it's on the same level as Joe. Oh, that, and Ritz was Ritz found out your Ritz. He found out your uh, he found out your sleeping schedule. You got to tell the audience the story. Yeah, so I recently linked my watch to Training Peaks, I think, and it gives a little more information from your Garmin than Final Surge does, and it tells my sleep every night. And the first like three or four nights that I had it linked every night was like six and a half to seven hours because <laughs> I just like had had like I was in I'm in one of my bouts of insomnia right now. And Ritz, <laughs> Ritz messaged me about it. He's like, you got to work in your sleep. I'm like, oh, I got to disable What are you doing? I got to, I got to disable that feature immediately. So Yeah, you said that to him and he didn't take the joke either. He's like, I'm going to be watching. Yeah, so not happy about that. But I feel like Alicia's got to sleep the most. I was going to pick Alicia for the most as well. Really? Uh, just purely based off the fact that one time I was flipping through her watch to see something and it had her last night's sleep and it was like over nine hours. So I was like... I mean, that's... I feel like Yara sleeps a lot. But is he up late? He's definitely up late in the morning. But I don't know if he's... Or if that's also because he's staying up yeah, late. Yeah, because I, I told him... I don't know. Yeah. I think, he, I think he gets to bed at like 11. I don't think he like crazy like... Also, I don't know if he's one of those people who... He's awake, but he just stays in his bed for like an hour. Mm. Cause See, this is, this is the hard thing with this. Because you just don't know like people's schedule alright tonight I'll just do a lap of the house and just see when, to see if people are sleeping check on everyone's <laughs> door are you awake yeah it's it's a hard question because we don't I think Alicia's probably honestly I, I'd have to agree if it's a community thing I'd have to agree that Alicia probably would be the safest bet safe for pick mo- safe for pick. most sleep I would I would just say Yard if he actually is going to bed like and not staying up or like being on his phone for an hour before he comes up submerges from the from the basement a sneaky pick for a lot of sleep is actually center as well because she sleeps in every morning yeah she yeah, really she late asleep. well not really late so. all right well let's let's just say center yard and alicia alicia you pick alicia i'll pick yard i'll okay. pick yard do you have a pick uh, he said alicia. i picked alicia i think alicia yeah. well. all right i'll pick yard um so at least amount of sleep so i think we already went through that I said joe oh yeah joe well I, i'm gonna slash say, myself i'm gonna also say um Sure. I think Gus actually sleeps the most. <laughs> Gus has his old cover. He easy. sleeps eighteen hours. <laughs> yeah. He's basically a koala. What's his quality of sleep though? Does do it's, dogs have REM sleep? Deep sleep. He he sometimes Lights barks it? and like does a running thing when he's asleep. That's, that's he's woken himself up one time with a fart. <laughs> he farted and then he just goes, <laughs> and I'm like, what? What's going on? And it was him. He just because he heard that because like the, the fart was like echoing. <laughs> the, the odd echo fight yeah. from guys oh jeez and he kind of freaked out he was okay I had to calm him down he must have been having a bad dream open the window. he just started listening yeah he's heard, he yeah, he heard, he heard his name Gus but um, yes. what's the next Q&A Mort? so the final one to round out today's episode is what would our fantasy non-running specific sponsorships be if you could pick one company to be sponsored by but that's not in the running industry well yeah let's say not running industry play it safe uh, what would it be and why I mean this, this is it equal sponsorship it's not like yeah it's it doesn't even let's just say like money's like not even a thing it's just the cool factor it's like okay. Red Bull 
Red Bull would be up there. Like, yeah, that's cool not factor. A pretty cool factor. But there are a lot of other really cool companies. The thing is, Red Bull has a lot of cool factor in the way it operates, but maybe even cooler is the companies that don't even sponsor anyone, if you think about it. Because then you're especially special. Yeah, the one the one that I'm thinking of doesn't sponsor anyone, I don't think. Because I think that I might start off with Ferrari. I wouldn't like a Ferrari sponsorship. And I don't even think I have to explain that. I think <laughs> no, that just speaks for itself. Speaks for itself. <laughs> I would take a Ferrari do you actually, Is it a sponsor? Like you get a Ferrari? What do you get? I would assume so. <laughs> I would hope so. If they sponsor me, I at least get a nice Ferrari. That means if I'm going to pick like... You just want to pick the most expensive. <laughs> yeah. Like if I pick Red Bull, do I get Ferraris worth of what I get? <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a good. I guess you have no, to. No, I won't pick Red Bull. Dude, you go. Uh, <laughs> my, I, I would say Apple. Apple. Purely for the fact that like if I am sponsored by Apple, maybe I can get into the, the, the stocks, you know? <laughs> Plus like Gus went through like three fucking AirPods <laughs> the last time. Um, like I'd be nice to just replace those for free. That's and like, big... I mean, everyone uses Apple products. Apple TV is free. Um, Good TV plus, shows. Plus uh, <clears throat> Apple car coming out soon. So yeah, Apple for me. Give you Apple. That would be cool because then... There'll be an Apple house in like 2060. You got can't get in because your lock, the lock code doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that if you had like the lock code on the house Guess and you're trying thing. to get your face ID for your Apple house and it just locks you out. That's actually smart. Doors should have face ID. No, it shouldn't. I, I think know. some of them probably Because do. I think that there could be like a twin out there of George <laughs> Beamish that's evil and then he can get into your house. Yeah, because then if someone wants to get in, they have to murder you and take your Pretty face off. Put your face. Or oh, they just that. mold, like, like 3D print like your, your mask. Yeah. I am... Gee, there's too many out there. What's he going to say? Is he going to be a Manuka honey company? Is it going to be a lamb company? <laughs> I, I was going to say just Simon Beamish so I can get some, some yeah, lamb. Simon, can here. you get us some Magu beef, please? Cheers. Yeah, just please some, sponsor please an episode. Send sponsored by beef. beef and lamb. Yeah. Beef and lamb, Simon. That'd be nice. But then how does that equate to a Ferrari? <laughs> It'd you, be a lot. You uh, just essentially have an unlimited... You probably just have a lifetime supply of beef. Nice. You know the one sponsorship that's not necessarily cool, but would be super useful. Amazon. If you were sponsored by Amazon, you could get anything. I wouldn't like, feel very good about it though. No, you wouldn't. But that's like a sponsorship where like literally anything you need. You'd be able to yeah, get. but I guess you're just like if you're sponsored by Amazon, you just that's just like your sponsorship is just money. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, what do yeah. you actually get out of being sponsored by Amazon? Nothing really. I mean, they do sponsor stuff. A sponsor, um, like I think maybe like stadiums or something yeah. like NBA, for example. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Just are they sponsored by a coffee company too? Coffee so you get free machines, but then also free coffee. Lamazoko. Yeah, that'd be nice. Lamazoko for George. Yeah. Is that, that your is that your pick or is that just a thought? Oh, that might just be a thought. Oh, okay, it's a thought. Just George is that. he's uh really. What about, what, what about what about Mortine? What's that? <laughs> The bug spray. No, no, the stuff that Joe uses <laughs> in the gels. <laughs> Morton. Oh, Morton. Sorry. Morton. Morton, Morton is a bug spray. <laughs> Down under. Sorry. Sorry. It's like kills cockroaches. Yeah, every time Joe texts like, can I get the Morton 320? I was like, dude, what do you... You get a bug problem. You have a bug problem, bro. And then yeah. I realized it's... The Cockroach end. 320. Yeah. Also, it doesn't count, though, because... It's, it's a running... It's the running industry. industry. Can you be sponsored by, like, government? <laughs> <laughs> the New Zealand government sponsored by the New Zealand government be pretty nice just be the Prime Minister alright nice. I think we're gonna need an answer here George shit alright um I thought one of those ones were good I'm I want I want, I'm just want a lamb sponsorship lamb All sponsorship right. whatever that means Australian beef lamb. and lamb Australian beef and lamb, lamb. Australian lamb <laughs> Australian lamb we'll, we'll sort that out for you we'll George you. specifically you heard it first folks wants an Australian lamb sponsorship we like the sound of we that. We like the sound of that. Thank you, George. Yeah. Well, so those are our sponsors, and that's our Q&A done there. Anything else from us? Or do you think we're ready to wrap this one up? Yeah. Well, anybody that's still listening, thanks for that. Thanks for <laughs> sticking around. But Definitely one. one of those episodes are probably tough to make it through. Yeah. <laughs> we but appreciate your support. Those are the best ones, though. They are the best ones. Because there's little nuggets in there, you know? Little nuggets. I hope so. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this one. I hope you enjoyed our... Uh, 
rambles and especially our little draft let us know which team you guys think are taking the w but yeah that's it for us for episode 86 we'll see you guys next week